Novak Djokovic versus Matteo Berrettini is the men's final for Wimbledon for 2021. Both players have had different roads to get to the final stage. Berrettini entered the tournament as the number seven seed and will take on Pella in the first round. And after dropping the second set, he'd prevail in four, six, four, three, six, six, four, six, love. In his first round match, Berrettini hit 20 aces and only the three double faults, so his serve was on point. He also went on to hit 47 winners and 29 errors and lost only nine points on his first serve at 83% of first serve points won. He also converted five out of the eight break points that he got, and he only had one break point against his serve for the entire match. His second round was against the lucky loser, Van der Zanschel. Berrettini dismissed the Dutchman in straight sets, 6-3, 6-4, 7-6. This second round match, Berrettini's serve was firing again with 20 aces and only the two double faults. He also hit 39 winners and 27 unforced errors, so still not the greatest hitting of all time. The serve was definitely keeping him afloat. And again, only losing nine points on his first serve. The first serve was the key, and although he only converted two out of the seven break points that he got. He didn't get broken at all in the match. He faced nine break points and he saved them all thanks to the big serving. His third round opponent was against Bedenay and again, a straight set performance winning in three, 6-4, 6-4, 6-4. Against Bedenay, again, the serve was firing. This time he hit 20 aces and no double faults. So a very good serving display by Berrettini. To go with the 20 aces, he hit 38 winners in total and only 23 unforced errors. Still not the best hitting he's done, but the serve definitely keeping him in front and keeping him going in this tournament. And again, he only lost nine points on his first serve when he got it in. It's becoming a trend. He's only losing nine points going into these rounds and his serve is the key. He converted three out of the nine break points that he got and he didn't get broken in the entire match, only facing two break points on his own serve. In the fourth round, he'd face another unseated opponent, Avashka. And again, another straight sets performance from Berrettini. 6-4, 6-3, 6-1. In this match, the serve wasn't working as well as the previous three rounds. He only hit seven aces and the three double faults. To go with that, he had 37 winners and 23 unforced errors. So not the best match that he's played for the week, but still very effective on his first serve. Only losing six points on his first serve. So again, the first serve is key. He converted six out of the 12 break points. So not the best conversion rate for the tournament. And he only faced one break point for the entire match. So another great serving display thanks to the first serve. His quarterfinal opponent was the number 16 seed Felix Ogeliasim. And this was the first time Berrettini was playing a seeded player for the event. Berrettini had the experience prevailing in four, six, three, five, seven, seven, five, six, three. Against Eliasim, this would be Berrettini's poorest performance. Didn't play too well in this one. He hit the 12 aces and the three double faults, but it hit so many unforced errors. 33 winners, 45 unforced errors for the entire match. So a lot more errors than winners in this one. And his first serve percentage went down to 76%, losing a lot of points on the first serve. So Ali Asim did well to get the serve back into play. And he converted only six of the 14 break points that he got on the Ali Asim serve. And he gave away 12 break points, being broken three times on his own serve. In the semifinals, Berrettini would take on the number 14 seed, Hercatch, who was just coming off the win against Roger Federer. And after winning the first two sets easily, he had to fight to finish in four, eventually prevailing 6-3, 6-love, 6-7, 6-4 to advance to his first Grand Slam final. The semi-finals would be Berrettini's best performance by far. He absolutely killed it on serve and his ground strokes were amazing as well. The forehand was working. 22 aces, only the one double fault for Berrettini and that came at the very last moment in the match, serving for the match in the fourth set. He hit a massive 60 winners and only 18 unforced errors, which is both the most winners he's hit in the entire tournament and the least unforced errors. So the ratio was very, very far apart. Very good hitting for Berrettini. He also served at 86% of first serve points won. So serving the big first serve, it was working again. And he converted six out of the 10 break points on the Hercatch serve. And he also wasn't broken on his own serve, only giving away two break points and he saved them both. The defending champion and world number one, Novak Djokovic, started his tournament against the wildcard Draper. And after losing the first set, Djokovic would eventually prevail in 4, 4-6, four, 6-1, six, six, 6-2, six, two, six, two. Against Draper, Djokovic was serving very, very well. He served 25 aces and only the one double fault, which is a massive serving day for Novak Djokovic. To go with that, he hit 47 winners and 24 unforced errors and only lost eight points when he got his first serve in. So the serve was massive in this first round. He converted six out of the 15 break points that he got and he saved two out of the three break points against his own serve. So again, the serving display from Djokovic in the first round was awesome. 
awesome. His second round opponent was against the veteran Anderson, who he'd had some battles with at Wimbledon in the past. But this time, Djokovic got the job done in straight sets, 6-3, 6-3, 6-3. In the second round, the serving was still there, but it was more about the ground strokes. He didn't hit many errors at all. Nine aces for Djokovic on the serve, one double fault. With that, he hit 25 winners and only six unforced errors. So a great display by the world number one. Again, the first serve was crucial, only losing seven points when he got his first serve in. And he converted four out of the eight break points on the big Anderson serve while not giving away any break point chances. So the first serve was crucial again, but he wasn't giving points away on the ground strokes either. His third round opponent was against the qualifier Kudla. And after getting the job done in the first two sets, the third set was tight with both players having set points, but Djokovic would get through in three sets, 6-4, 6-3, 7-6. Six. In the third round, Djokovic did struggle on the ground strokes. He seemed to be struggling with a little bit of form. Also, the crowd were on his back, so he wasn't dealing with them well either. He hit eight aces and six double faults. To go with the serving, he hit 34 winners and 28 unforced errors, so his ground strokes weren't as good as the second round. He did only lose six points on his first serve when he got his first serve in and converted four out of the 10 break points that he got on the Kudla serve, but he also got broken a couple times himself, only saving two of the four break points against his own serve. His fourth round opponent was against the number 17 seed Garen, who's a little bit of a surprise getting into the fourth round, considering he's more of a clay quarter. And this showed as Djokovic demolished the Chilean in straight sets. 6-2, 6-4, 6-2. In the fourth round against Garen, his serving was back. He hit nine aces and only the one double fault, which was back to what he was doing against Anderson and Draper in the first couple of rounds. His ground strokes, however, were still a little bit off, hitting 28 winners and 23 unforced errors. But the big stat only losing three points when he got his first serve in, so the serving was back. However, he only converted five out of the 12 break points that he got, so the conversion rate wasn't as good considering the amount of chances that he got. But the two break points he faced on his own serve, he saved them both. So he was saving break points like he did at the start of the tournament. His quarterfinal opponent was against the unseated Fucevic, and although Fucevic did have some highlight shots during the match, Djokovic got the job done in straight sets again. 6-3, 6-4, 6-4. In the quarterfinals, this would be arguably Djokovic's worst performance performance considering the scoreline was straight sets it didn't show that on the stat sheet he only hit four aces and three double faults 23 winners and 30 unforced errors so for the first time in the tournament Djokovic was hitting more errors than winners and even though his first serve points one was still at 81 percent which seemed to be a common thing going through the tournament he only converted four out of the 14 chances that he got on the Fucevic serve however he did save five out of the six break points on his own serve so the serving was still there but the ground strokes were a little bit off in the semi-finals Djokovic would take on the number 10 seed Denis Shapovalov and this was a very tight match for Djokovic as he was tested by the young Canadian, but he would eventually get through in three tight sets, 7-6, 7-5, 7-5, to advance to the final again. In the semi-finals, Djokovic was back on the ground stroke, starting to play a lot better, and he was coming up clutch when he needed the big serves the most. He hit eight aces and five double faults to go with 33 winners and only 15 unforced errors. So back on the ground strokes, he was back in form. And although he didn't win as many first serve points in this match as he did in the previous rounds, he did convert three out of the 10 break points faced against the Shapovalov serve while saving 10 out of the 11 break points on his own serve. And some of those games, he was down love 40 and he came back to win them. So his serve was coming up clutch, even though he wasn't getting as many free points on that first serve. The head-to-head -head between these two is 2-0 in favor of Djokovic. But the last time they played was at the French Open in the quarterfinals a couple of months ago. And Djokovic won in four, but Matteo Berrettini was starting to come back in that match. So it's interesting to see if Berrettini can get off to a good start here, how he's going to affect Djokovic on the faster surface. If Berrettini is going to win this match, he needs his serve to be working. And of course, the forehand. They're the weapons, and he needs to be using them to great effect against Djokovic if he's going to win any sets here against the world number one. If Djokovic is going to win, he needs to limit the unforced errors. In the last couple of matches, he's been hitting a lot of errors, and if Berrettini is firing at all cylinders with a serve and the forehand, Djokovic can't be giving away free points. So he needs to be clutch, and he also needs to be serving well as well. This is a tough one because we've got Berrettini who's playing in his first final with Novak Djokovic going for records at the moment. He's got over 20 grand slams, joining Roger Federer and Rafa Nadal. So I'm going to go with Djokovic on that one just because Berrettini hasn't been to a final of a slam before. I think that it's going to be very new to him. He's going to be nervous early. And I think Djokovic is going to prevail just because he's got the experience over Berrettini. I think it's going to be a five-setter, though. And I think Djokovic is going to get through. Let me know down in the comments below who do you think is going to win this final.